Welcome back, everybody. It's Project Zoidberg, I guess, day one. Uh, this isn't stealing parts from other things. Uh, this is stealing material from other things to make the parts for this thing. So I, uh, I started off by doing what I don't do, and uh, that is writing things down. So I uh, took the wheels off. I got my trusty... Uh, terribly oversized ruler. I wish they made, like, I need an 18-inch ruler is basically what it comes down to. Uh, uh, a foot is not enough and three feet is too many feet. So we, uh, I, I don't know if this, uh, if this illustration will make any sense to anyone. Let me just glide this over. Okay. Again, we're just going to go Ticonderoga on this one. So I just basically marked out the positions of the axles and then the chassis center. And I could work off the chassis center to try to keep it as symmetrical as possible. Um, the upper mounts and the existing shock mounts, the stuff on the axles, I, I need to retain that. Uh, there's the front upper mount, which is quite high. I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, the rear upper mount is down here. I'm basically just going off of what already existed. Here's the line of the shock. There's the arc of the shock mounts. I would like to add more holes, enable, uh, uh, which would allow me to run longer and or shorter shocks. I'm thinking probably longer. I have two sets of longer shocks. I don't know where these holes are going to fall. I just know that that is the existing hole based off of all the dimensions of the axle line. I will be uh, dropping the nose of the skid. We're doing LCG. I'm basically doing the same uh, amount of drop that went on Blue Sky High, as I think that that number served well. And if we're going to do this, we might as well go all the way and do this. I have a, this is a Vader uh, skid. I, th I think it was for a Red Cat or something. It never got used. So there are the marks for the holes there. It shouldn't affect the length length terribly. Uh, the, the, I might have to change the rod end on the rear lowers because if we're going to run that and we're going to do this like we're going to do this, we might as well just go all in with yet another Amazon dig gearbox. So this is where the illustration sits for now. I'm trying to keep parallel link angles. I got them perfect in the front. Uh, I've got some twiddling to do along the rear link line in the back. But uh, I, I think the length of the rear link is good, and so I want to keep things along this arc. I will give myself two more lines of holes. I will give myself a couple extra holes in the front. Uh, and the, the, the real question here, because we're working off of a cage, and I don't have anything like a frame rail to work off of actually i got i got a bit more cant on this one i could probably go a little less cant but we're, we're gonna go with that because it seems to work with the length lengths i got a nice parallel there so i'm gonna measure to see during flex like how high up does this arch have to come how far can the shocks come down how much lean angle is too much lean angle uh it's a revision one but I kind of have this desire in me not to do it three times. So let's try to get Capra LCG done in one piece. I found what I believe is a, uh, a, a chunk of aluminum that should be plenty big enough. Uh, I, of course, have not measured the farthest distance at the bottom from the farthest distance at the top, so I don't know. Uh, but it looks like from about there to about there will be the size of the chassis and it's starting to look pretty tall so uh the possibility of uh bolt-on towers is not out of the question i'd like to do it all as one piece i will be shaving this down as it is for some reason 80 millimeters wide i will trim it down as much as i can and still retain clearance for the gearbox Oh, and then, of course, because there's a fusion in here, I have to go through the rigmarole again. Of, it has to have a longer uh, mount to get the servo on it because uh, this thing is built to hold a 540, and we're putting in an extra long 550. So that's, that's where that sits. 
I will get working on marking where shock link lengths go and uh, where shock towers are going to stop and start. And uh, then we'll get this transferred over to aluminum and I'm going to start cutting. And through the magic of editing, here we are. Uh, there, there's more lines and yet less lines at the same time. I was trying to keep the number of uh, shock mounting positions to an, an acceptable, reasonable minimum. And I, I think I ended on 16 in the front and 20 on the rear, which seems fine. Uh, I did dig out a the stock Capra skid and kind of compared it to where the LCG positions are. And uh, the, uh, the, the, for the, uh, the lower mount for the rear upper link is exactly lined up with the, the stock lower hole. And the upper mount for the front link is lined up perfectly with the top hole. So uh, the marks that I've made uh, will allow me to have two lower mounting and one upper alternates in the front. And uh, two lower and one higher in the rear, I believe. Yes. Uh, I've also given myself some little shark gills here to uh, to go to longer links, as I had noticed that the way the rear mount, the, the rear links are mounted in, at least on my setup, when you get to right about there, the shock has not collapsed all the way. There's still about three millimeters of travel left, uh, but these have struck. So if this length link is lengthened, that shouldn't be a problem. It's also going to move out about three millimeters the width of the chassis so that should help reduce that as well uh you start i start with french curves to we're going for a very arky smooth thing the uh the the suspension has quite a lot of up travel even with the shocks that are fitted to it now which i believe there was a whole shock move around i'm not a hundred percent sure what shocks are even still on there i think they might be the 10-3 oe shock so that 96 millimeter area i still have some very long desert lizards uh set up in the droop mode and they're they're fairly stiff so i did make marks and accommodations for right there so i can run the longer shock but with how much the skid is dropping it's definitely not gonna raise the height of the vehicle at all the, uh, the gearbox, this is backwards, but the gearbox is down so low. Uh, the top of the gearbox here is lower than the lowest available shock mounting point, so it's way down here. I considered taking even this down even lower because that is a big plank there. I, I've dropped it so much. It, it is below the, the axle line, so we're going to find out uh, in short order, if that is going to be a problem. I didn't know how long to make the rails because I was kind of trying to loose test it up against the bar body, uh, and I'm just going to leave them full length. It, it's no big deal. So I tried to uh, at least leave it where the front is the front and the rear is the rear to confuse myself a little bit less. Uh, there's a lot of uh, auto-punching uh, coming up here shortly. I'm just going to spray glue this glue it to the sheet of aluminum, cut one side out, rough cut the other side, put a tapped hole in it, uh, bolt the two together, and uh, get to cutting. So uh, this will be loud, and it'll take a while. So the next time you see uh, this shape, it should be made out of aluminum. The idea is to uh, drill as few holes as possible. Uh, I went with Six? Is that six? I went with six. I left the rail ends really overlong. Uh, it's got a sort of a photographic images of the Loch Ness Monster look to it. Uh, it has to go to the drill press now and get all the shock holes and all the link holes and everything else drilled out. I have those already marked. They're already punched. Uh, the cutout is equally easy when going with all smooth angles as it is with the uh, as the super angular that i went with on blue sky high uh, this time around i shouldn't have to use any uh, filing at all i don't think uh, it's time uh, will tell if if this center bit is too high but if we imagine that sitting on the ground 
So the skid would be there, and the gearbox would be there. Yeah, that is that is really down there. So we've really L'd the CG. Will it work? Well, God, I hope so. Uh, the, a the angle of the skid is the only thing that's up for question. Because the holes that have little... The holes that have little buttons in them, those are the... Well, that's the OE shock position there, and th those are the holes I made. So, once you start drilling, it's uh, it's kind of hard to stop drilling. So, I did manage to stop there. I, I uh, restricted it 20 holes for the rear, 16 for the front. We've got, uh, what is that? Uh, 12, 14 for the front, 8 for the rear. Should be more than enough. Uh, I believe the the holes that have the the screws holding them in place are the the oh, the positions that they were before. Uh, it's got a uh, it looks even potentially more sea monstery now. Uh, I shaped the entire thing with just a single three inch the big spindle guy uh, as if I have to do any adjustments to the chassis once the halves are separated. I wanted that have to be uh, reasonably easy to do. So all that remains now before these are separated and stuff starts to get really real is to tap the 50-ish holes in here, uh, get pulled apart, get them cleaned up, and then start getting it mocked up. Uh, first step of which will be uh, mounting the chassis plate in the center, dropping the gearbox in it, and uh, seeing where that sits. Because really, uh, before I even fabricate any braces, once this is in and the gearbox is sitting on it, I can determine whether this plate width is fine, uh, should it be brought down narrow, uh, where the placement is going to be for chassis braces. I figure it's probably going to need several, which is kind of why I left material here in case I run a, a brace here or there. Uh, I didn't leave anything really uh, provisions for body mounts. I don't know what I'm going to use. It does look like this will sit down. I mean, it can get pretty far up in there. It's about that far from the, that'll go all the way up. So that looks pretty good. It sticks down below the skirt. Of course, it's going to. It wouldn't. Uh, the old chassis line is there. Uh, anything I might have said or thought bad about uh, the giant rolls of butcher paper you buy at Ikea for five bucks, uh, this thing's holding up remarkably well. I mean, it has survived the process up till here. I figure tapping the holes will probably spell its end. But uh, this will be uh, ready to get some screws in it within just a few minutes. All right, 50, uh, 50 plus holes tapped. And once again, much to my surprise, uh, the Ikea butcher paper holds up just fine. Uh, I think out of the uh, 50 or so, I I did all right on the grids. Uh, that rear grid looks okay. Those eight look okay. Uh, I think this one is up a little too high. And uh, I feel like there's a wonky one in here. This one is down like a tenth of a millimeter too low. But uh, I think if you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't see it. Uh, once again, with the rails at full length, I don't know if they'll need to be cut. I figure I will be doing uh, here coming up shortly. I'll be doing the front and rear braces first. I will do those out of three eighths inch steel. That way I can get them cut to length, get them drilled, tap fitted. And then when I go to make whatever I decide for bumpers, I can just weld straight onto them. So no need for mounts or anything like that. Uh, this is a, an instance where having some square stock on hand would probably be helpful, but I don't. Then coming up, uh, he's in there. There's the, the mount bracket for the gearbox, but I will do that after everything is in place here, and I can at least mock up the axles in place. It looks like the holes for the uh, chassis plate line up. Uh, I will get that put in there shortly. I uh, need to pull this apart, get this stuff all cleaned off, Get these just touch sanded up because they're very they're very rough on the backside. You get all the blowout from the drill bit, even though that was a brand spanking new one. Uh, so we are we are minutes away from at least the beginnings 
of assembling this. Brief chassis rail intermission here as I am uh, fitting up the the, the QT uh, dig gearbox. Uh, if anybody tries to tell you that that's not just a direct knockoff of a Hertz, oh, it absolutely is. Uh, some channel uh, on YouTube, I can't remember which, literally bolted this on, and it just it bolts on just like a Hertz. So uh, th that's out of the way. This is un. Uh, molested. This is how it comes when you take it apart. As I've mentioned in other videos, there is not a speck of grease inside this thing. Here is the the, the original, the, the equipped top shaft, which I am changing out uh, because I have the ability to do so. Uh, if anyone else wanted to do what I am doing, uh, they would have to buy some extra bits because in the last one of these that I bought, this is the top lace shaft. It has two pins. That's the pin for the spur adapter, and that's the pin for the top gear. Now, when you buy one, it's one piece. That's all... I don't know if it's swaged or cast or whatever, but that's one piece. So that top gear does not come off. The top gear coming off is important to me because I am using... This is an STRC lay shaft for uh, Trexus Magnum gearbox, but the gear that is supposed to fit on this is not the right size. I need the gear for an SCX-10 II gearbox, which I happen to have. Why do I do this? Well, because then I can use the the element slash associated uh, slipper eliminators or put a full-blown associated slipper on here because I have literally boxes of associated gears after having run those associated gears for years and years and years. So I'll have the choice between 48 pitch or 32 pitch for this. I do this because this is the spur gear adapter, a nice aluminum spur gear adapter that comes with the $60 gearbox. But if you'll notice, the, the hole spacing on that, like this is a conventional uh, spur gear, the holes are way out here on the outside. So your only other option is to run the spur gear that comes with it, which is a big uh, steel... 48 pitch and I I don't I don't like these I have I'm, I'm, I'm building up a a collection of them because as soon as I get one of these gearboxes I take that out and my only other option is to run like I do have one of these left but the pin in this adapter barely goes in and the pin in this adapter goes way down this is an MST so it goes way down in so I would rather just convert it to something for which I have an ample supply of gears. And, I mean, a 10-2, 3 gear is a 10-2, 3 gear. Uh, if you've got a gear, it's going to fit. I need to put a couple 5mm shims on that to get that to sit up straight. But I will throw some grease on this and uh, get this thing slapped back together. Oh, also, if you're going to buy one of these, see right these right here? Uh, I don't know what's under that zinc plating, but I almost feel like it's not steel. Uh, so the first thing I do, the only reason they're here is so that I can match the lengths and then those all go directly into the circular file and these all get replaced with nice 10.9 or 12.9 hardware. So once this is put back together and I get a gear bolted up to it, uh, we can throw this uh, on the rails and put it together and see if anything else is going to need cut. Just a couple more quick things to point out uh, about this gearbox before I get it put in. Uh, lay shaft in place. Uh, the included spacers. What what has occurred to me now? This is my third one of these, and they're sixty bucks. And at sixty bucks, it's an absolute steal because it's got dig on it, and the dig works remarkably well. It works really, really well. But uh, as you can see, all the hardware has been repl replaced, and you need some real short six millimeter in the back and if you only replace three screws on this thing uh, replace these because they will round out just by looking at them so with some grease in it it's it's so smooth and so quiet it's a great thing uh, i have to uh, mill up a spacer purely because i mean these pieces were never designed with the intentions of going together when I put some torque on that, it presses the little plastic vein there down just enough to rub. So I could just take one of these and cut it down, 
but in the the grand tolerances of things yeah that's not going to happen like look at the amount of space in there it's like a five and a half millimeter hole with a four and a half millimeter shaft in it so i will turn that up out of something uh locate some screws to put that double check that chassis rail to see if the gugon has soaked in enough to take that template off that template was making a permanent home out of that situation so uh, rather than scratch at it with my fingernails for 10 minutes, I figured I'd get something else done. The spacer uh, turned out to be all of uh, four millimeters thick. It was a number 13 drill bit, if anybody finds them in this same situation, which no one ever will. Uh, this is a near vintage 32-pitch uh, spur gear for Associated, but thankfully Associated, they have stuck with the same sort of system standard uh, for a good long time now so these the uh, slipper em eliminators from the stealth gearbox they do indeed fit inside the hex on this spur gear but baby they fit tight like they are they snap into place so this is definitely no slipper at all here like nothing is going to budge so uh, it fits nice it's got a good offset to the case uh, I think the shaft is still long enough that even if I wanted to run the case, will that, will that fit? Uh, no. Just drill a hole in it and then eliminate the whole point of it. That's why I don't run these. So uh, definitely uh, 32 pitch here for the Capra. Uh, I'll see whatever the smallest I have on hand for pinion. And hopefully... Uh, the, the, the little bit there, the, the goo remover has worked enough to get those cleaned up so I can sand them and start putting some screws in this. Things have been sanded. Uh, here are the crazy looking, uh, I, I still think they look like, uh, Loch Ness monsters. All right, this goes one particular way, which is that way. I have, uh looked at what direction the fasteners or what length the fasteners should be let's just get that started there this is where we find out if the holes are uh, drilled in the correct locations which is always a fun uh, thing to find out on video because uh you know i'm basically I'm 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 basically eyeballing everything. So there's there's the slide rule and the uh, what's that thing that what is that thing? Drafting table. There was no drafting table here. This is this is uh this is seat of the pants fabrication. The only way I know. And uh, so far. It looks, uh, it looks like things are fitting. Now, generally, this skid plate... Well, that's not snug. Uh, generally, this skid plate uh, uses the big, long set screws to hold the uh, lower links in place. We're going to go full unwise and try some M3x40s which that'll be fun to thread through. I probably should have uh, pre-drilled this, but eh, you know, let's uh, get the seat of our pants and fly by it. So did he put this on the right way? Yes, it appears. It appears so. And uh, I'm already feeling that there's not a lot of uh, empty space here, so I don't think cutting the... Uh, Cutting the chassis down is a uh, is an option. It looks like it is occupying. I mean, I could. I suppose I could trim the motor mount plate down, as I'm not going to run the cover. At least I have no plans to run the cover. Well, those eight screws went in, and uh, yeah, that guy is a. Uh, 
he's down real low compared to where uh, those shock mounting positions are. So uh, this is the front, obviously, and that's that's the rear. The holes are looking okay. It looks like a bonkers thing. Uh, that kind of lined up quite nicely. So what I will do now is set this right here. Grab this fella here. What I should be able to do is get to unbolting this, and I should, hopefully the link lengths will will cooperate with what I have uh, fabricated here. Let's get that lined up with the shocks. So, so right about like that, and uh, I should be able to throw the whole suspension on here. I don't know what I'm going to have to do spacer-wise for the shock tops. Uh, I am going to attempt to assemble it right now just with the gear that's here. I'm not going to I'm not going to change anything else. And uh, I'll try to get this at least into something that can sit up under its own power. Through the magic of YouTube editing, no time has passed in the YouTube universe. Uh, many times have passed uh, since I last spoke into this device. Uh, the debris pile grows ever larger. Uh, I, I realize now I have pretty much enough cast-offs from a Capra to uh, reassemble a Capra. There's the whole cage that goes there. Here's the whole gearbox. Here's the skid. Uh, I still need to... Uh, 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 clearly, I have not yet addressed dig. Uh, that's, that's a whole nother thing. Perhaps for a whole nother day. Um, uh, time is marching on. But, uh, making only the tiniest of concessions, we, we have arrived somewhere. It's not the quietest thing in the world, but uh, compared to a Capra, it's pretty quiet. So here it is in all of its majestical glory, still looking like still looking like a sea monster. Uh, we've got no chassis braces in place yet, so this thing is flangily floppy. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to put any pinch in it and as of the time that I'm saying the words that I'm saying right now the only grievous error made so far is these four holes right here where's my pointer these four holes right here are not usable because I didn't pay attention to the fact that here is the the mount this would have gone this way this would have gone this way. So this is the front of the rig and this is the back. This would be on the quote-unquote driver's side for those of us in America. Uh, no problems here. I had originally used that link mount. The piece for the other side, on the other hand, you'll notice has had its top lopped off in order to clear good old hobby wing fusion. My brain apparently forgot this because if it had remembered... All I would have had to do is set that hole back that much. Like the, the five millimeters apart that those are, another five millimeters back, it clears no problem. But where the quick run sits now, uh, he's trying to get this mess out of the way. It's, I mean, it's right there. You can, you can see that I, I have access to four of the eight. The other four of the eight, at least on this side, are not accessible with that motor in place. Uh, both this gearbox and the Capra itself were designed with a 540 in mind. And the Fusion is a beefy 550. So the, the shock holes uh, actually work great uh, in the rear. We're in the aftmost lower most hole. So we have all those tuning options there. And the front is in the exact same position that it was when quote unquote stock. So uh, I just said, let's uh, let's go Gate Rover style. Strap the battery to the top of the servo. The link lengths do not appear to be correct for the top, but that's that's easy remed remed remediable. The uh, the the rear 
uh, drive shaft angle looks okay. It could be tipped up a little more, so these upper links just need to be the tiniest bit longer. Uh, I will probably actually go one hole higher. I have access to that hole, and it will allow me to get the, 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 the axle more straight up and down. Uh, the front has a lot of lean in it because when the, when the skid dropped down, it effectively got farther away from, from the top holes. So I wanted that link longer anyway. Uh, I just haven't, I, I need to, I, I'm sure I have a link that will fit that length. Uh, the, the lower links will stay. If I have to change anything with the upper links, that's, that's absolutely fine. So as it sits now, uh, the, 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 the body sits pretty much correct in the front, right about there. Uh, I left the frame rails full length, so... So at least at this point in the fabrication, we haven't arrived at anything that isn't correctable. Uh, I, uh, there's no loss to me that those are too long. There's no loss to me that I can't use those top four. I mean, if we take into account the, the chassis on Blue Sky High, there's like 50 holes on that thing that are no longer usable. So I was successful at least in lining the holes up for the shocks as I wanted to use them. And there's no pinch, so it's 80 millimeters straight across, and the shocks are just straight up and down, perfectly parallel with the chassis. And what this appears to have done without the pinch is uh, it, it has more articulation now than it did before. Uh, it's even more pronounced in the rear, uh, like... That might need to be limited. That's that's a lot. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, could just be a matter of attacking the shocks with heavier weight oil. So as much as the temptation is filling me right now to uh, just take this thing out and slap it on a rock as is, I can look at the angle of that, that front axle the, the caster is extreme. There must be 20 degrees of caster in the back, in the front, and in the back, uh, I think the upper links need to be two or three millimeters longer, and the drive shaft will be basically just straight across. Uh, the front is the front is going to be uh, more work than the rear, which I uh, had anticipated it being the other way around. Uh, it's it's quiet for a Capra, like at really low speed. So I threw an 11 in there. So this is the Amazon Dick Gearbox 1200 KV 1156 gearing. It is really, really properly slow. And it will just, it will just go over whatever. Uh, I also, I don't know if I'm in between, I don't, I don't know if the rear is actually fully engaged, but yeah, it'll just drive over anything. So I think it, uh, is, uh, qualifying for, uh, for belly dragger, uh, status here as that's pretty much the height it sits at right now. So I've got about two fingers. Meanwhile, there's a, there's a full three fingers under the diffs so this right here is the lowest point uh it came out very smooth across the bottom i'm for a first day i i'm i'm ecstatic with how this came out so uh before this thing gets taken outside much as i want to do it now uh this uh must build the extendo bracket to mount the dig servo because I mean as soon as this thing went nose up the lever would flop back and it would just go into dig so I think for a part one I think I think I did pretty good I mean that looks almost like a result uh, I feel like more material could still be taken off right there I think I'm gonna leave it as is and uh, post this one up in the hopes that, like, maybe uh, somebody will uh, throw out some suggestions and be like, oh, you should do this, or whatever you do, don't do that. Because, uh, as with everything else, 
making it up as I go along. I think it's good. I ordered a servo for Jolly Green, so when that comes, we can we can get that out of there. I'll hand that off to little fella. Uh, get that bracket done probably in the intermediate period. Uh, I am probably just going to mount the switch and the receiver to the top of the dig servo. That makes me want to put a full-size dig servo in there because then I'll have more realist. I can make a play. Whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that next time. So this is, this is how it sits now. I mean, I went from uh, a working RC car to an almost working RC car in the, in the short span of one day. So pretty good. And uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. So uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I don't know how it'll come out in the edit. Hopefully this one isn't as long as some of the things I do. But uh, I hope you turn in for the next part to see how this thing comes out. I mean, in the next video, for sure, I'm going to wheel it body or not. Because it looks like everything will be under these little knees, hips, bumps, whatever they are. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in for the next one.